Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, this weekend is a big weekend because our new carburetor has finally arrived from the rebuilders. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. This place is a ridiculous mess. I tell you what. All right, so packed in the same type box and the same type paper in the same fashion, we have the same carburetor. And just like that, it's out of the box. That was a bit of a struggle. Well, there she is. She looks just like she did when she left. However, there were a couple of new things that they accomplished while it was back for the redo. So let's talk about that really quickly. All right, we got the uh, paperwork back here from the uh, rebuilder. So the uh, comments that I uh, put in there for the redo are poor idle quality, idle mixture adjustments offer no improvement, fuel dripping onto PCV connection below the inlet, casting plugs leaking, base gasket soaked with fuel, excess fuel pooling in the intake manifold. All of, the, all of those things were uh, what I noticed when I tried to run the carb. And I'm assuming everything here in all caps is what they did on this second go around. Replace the fuel inlet fitting. Check. Uh, needle and seat float. Accelerator pump and repaired the idle mixture adjustment. Okay. Uh, well, I can't see any of that stuff but uh, we'll have to trust that it is accomplished. The unit was tested good on our engine uh, once the repairs were completed. There you go. All right, so I don't know why you'd have to replace the uh, accelerator pump, but nonetheless, they did it. So, but the key aspect of this was, in my opinion, repaired the idle mixture adjustment. So let's see how it goes. All right, so we got the car back. It looks fantastic as it did before. Let's see if it runs any better. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the car. All right, we're back at it. I didn't figure you needed to see me reinstall the carburetor, so boom, boom, it's back on. The only thing challenging about putting a quadrajet on this old Cadillac is this big compressor, which is actually non-functional. And uh, I've been doing some reading on some of the, you know, uh, online stuff, and a lot of some of the guys are putting up with this, what they call the Sandin. Uh, the name of the company is Sandin, I believe. They put that this it's a cylindrically shaped, sort of barrel shaped compressor, but it's not quite as long. This is really a hassle. This thing comes right up against the carburetor and makes everything just a pain. So this is bad, needs to be replaced. So I may go with the Sandin. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. So give us some ideas. I'll be willing to entertain uh, nearly just about anything. All right, so got the uh, choke bolted down. I got the carb down to, you know, wrist tight. And uh, I got my fuel inlet fitting uh, tightened down just snug. Didn't, you know, I didn't wrench on it. Got my special wrench on the fuel inlet thing, the brand new one. Didn't want to break that. If it leaks, I'll just tweak it a little more. You know, you don't want to overdo it. So uh, it's raining in the background. So apparently we're in the rainy season here in Alabama. So up next, let's just see what we can see. You guys cross your fingers and your toes and say a prayer and all that kind of stuff. Last time I did this, I nearly blew the place up. Here we go. I have the uh, vacuum advance disconnected, so there's no advance on the distributor other than the uh, the mechanical. So, and before I hooked the fuel line up, I uh, ran the uh, fuel pump a little bit and uh, ran some gas in a bottle and just to you know, make sure there was no trash in the line. So anyway. All right, I stopped cranking on it just to make sure was there, there was no fuel leaks. Uh, we're gonna try again here. All 
All right, same drill as last time. They got the uh, fast idle set pretty low. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. That picked up a little bit there. Now it's coming on up. No fuel leaks around the fuel inlet. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's a little shaky. I don't think the carburetor is going to eliminate the um, the shaky idle. I, I think it's going to be something internal to the engine, to be honest with you. But at least we have a restored carburetor. Cross your fingers, nothing else breaks. I'm going to go ahead and shut the engine down and uh, adjust my high idle. So I'll be right back. All right, made a minor adjustment on the uh, high idle. I don't want to overdo it. And I reconnected the vacuum advance. Uh, just, you know, real easy like, right? I don't want any craziness. So I'll be right back. Let me fire it up, see what the effects are. You can hear the uh, yeah. You can hear the vacuum advance kick in a little bit there when the after I had the uh, high idle adjusted a little bit, it opens up the throttle plates a little bit and lets a little vacuum get to the distributor and then smooths it real it smooths it out really nicely. That's the way it's supposed to work. I have no idea what the idle is right now. Probably 1200, 1300. That's good enough for now. I'm not going to grab the test equipment and fool with it right now. I'm going to wait till it stops raining, and I'm going to take this old car on a test drive. All right, we're out and about. I did a fair amount of tuning on it in the uh, garage earlier, so I fibbed about that. Uh, the results are mixed. Uh, I'm not real impressed with uh, the way things are going, to be honest with you. But I think I'm going to leave it like it is. I was not having a problem with dieseling uh, at all uh, the way the carburetor was and then I send it off to get it uh, you know restored basically and now you know I'm having a dieseling problem after you turn the engine off which is kind of strange uh, the dieseling solenoid uh, had been removed a few years ago I still have it in a box it still works I suppose I could reinstall it but you know, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, if all things are running well, why do you even need it? So, eh, I know it's 71. It was a mixture between going between, uh, you know, the heyday of the 60s and leading into the emissions period of the 70s. So, there's that. Uh, but um, I think we still have a little bit of the idle issue there. I'm not sure if uh, the, uh, you know, the carb restoration company... If they really, really paid attention to, you know, the needs and of, of a quadrajet carburetor, because they do thousands a week, they said. So when I talked to them on the phone. So one plan that may come to fruition is maybe I just buy another carburetor uh, and put it on here, and then send this one off to a specialist like uh, Cliff Ruggles or maybe Quadrajet Power someplace like that but the wait time for those folks is like you know it's like three four five six months so that's kind of the reason why i i went the route i did uh or i could just leave it alone and do nothing you know that's always an option too uh the car runs fine going down the road it's the idle that just drives me bonkers but you know what for right now i think i'm going to get over it let's do a little more testing and i'll be back well, I guess on the brighter side of things, I'm running down the interstate with no vibrations or anything like that. So, hey, you know, at least there's that. And it looks like we're running at about 195 on the uh, temperature gauge down there and about 35 pounds of oil pressure. So, that'll work. Uh, these old 472s and 500s, they don't make a tremendous amount of oil pressure. Uh, but that's just uh, the way they were designed, I guess. So. And we're cruising right along at uh, 70 miles an hour up uh, I-65. Got to do a little errand here today, so uh, 
I thought, well, you know what? We got the car back on the car, so we might as well take the Cadillac. All right, I think I've done all the damage I can do for one day. Uh, we're idling over here, 750 to 800, something like that. Uh, took the old girl back to the shop, and I was like, you know what? I hadn't changed out those plugs in several thousand miles. So, and they were uh, R45 XLSs, and I had a brand new set of these. Uh, what are these? These are R44 XLS laying around, and uh, decided to throw them in there mainly because. Well, two reasons the old uh, plugs were a little old and the gap was not appropriate uh, on this new electronic ignition they were gapped for points at 35 thousandths which was stupid I forgot to change that and so I made a mistake and uh, anyway so I uh, put a new set of plugs in there gapped, in it, gapped them at 45 and uh, it seems to like that a little better right now I'm running 10 degrees of timing base timing and I was having problems with dieseling when you turn the car off. Um, the old, when, before the carburetor went into the shop, the, uh, the, the idle mixture screws were set to like, I think one was like three, three and a half, and the other was like four, four and a half, because just to get it to run right, you know? Well, after this rebuild, those numbers, that, that's invalid. I just ran them down to the base uh, while the engine was off, and then ran them back up to two and a half turns out. I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm tired of fiddling with it. So the vacuum is right on the line between the red and the green. Uh, I could probably tweak the idle mixture, you know, a little bit more and try to get it a little bit more in the green. I'm, quite frankly, I'm a little fed up right now, so <laughs> I'm not going to mess with that anymore. Idling about 750. I mean, you know, the thing runs good, you know. You know, you get it out on the road, it's, it runs great. I took it out earlier and it, runs down the highway just fine um, it's just the idle I just don't like the idle now did the carburetor place uh, actually do anything with the uh, with those restriction tubes in the uh, in the idle circuit I really don't know maybe maybe not one thing that is kind of bugging me is I still like to pull this carburetor back off this engine and make sure those well plugs underneath are not leaking so I'm not gonna do that in this video though I'll save that for a later day. But for right now, the old girl is back in service. She's running fine. As uh, long as you stay off idle. <laughs> and I guess maybe I'm being overly picky. But uh, let's see. Uh, anyway, we were having a problem with dieseling. Uh, with run on, you know. It would, it would, it would run on. It would uh, detonate. And then it would go whoosh, you know, out of the carburetor. I was like, dang, what is this, a geyser? Or, you know, anyway, let's shut her off. Let's see what happens here. All right, so 10 degrees. It likes 10 degrees. Um, I, I, at three and a half turns out on the mixture screws, even at base idle, it was whoosh when you turn it off. It was a mess. Uh, you can fire it back up on a hot start. Uh, not too much trouble. Let's try that. That seems to work pretty well, actually. It takes it a moment to get back up to the uh, base idle. Um, which I have it set at about 800-ish, you know. Um, actually on these cars, the base idle is supposed to be checked when it's in gear. You chalk the wheels, it's supposed to be 600 RPMs in gear, uh, which I found is about 800 RPM, <laughs> you know, in idle. I don't know why they do that. that I'm sure it was some 1971 emissions thing. So it's back up to the regular idle of 800 where I set it now. So I can do a hot start without any problems. And it doesn't diesel now when I turn it off. So that's pretty cool. I seem to have eliminated that little issue. The only thing remaining is a little bit of shakiness at the idle, which kind of drives me bonkers. And we're sitting at about 17, 17 and a half inches of vacuum right now. Again, I could probably tweak those idle mixture screws, but I'm not going to fool with that today. One last thing I'll probably do in the next day or two is take that car back off and uh, make sure the well plugs are not leaking. If they are leaking, it's going back to the carburetor place a third time. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I think I'm going to cut this off right now. I basically wanted to do a carburetor restoration, and I kind of did that-ish, you know. 
Uh, she looks really good though, doesn't she? That's a good looking old quadrajet. But uh, anyway, out on the open road, she runs like a wild banshee. Well, there you go, folks. Quadrajet restoration, kind of, part two. And we're gonna call this our final video in this short series. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one. And remember to enjoy driving and maintaining your classic Cadillac.